Welcome to UNO Libraries Literature Review Workshop. In this workshop, you'll find out what it means when people say the literature and why you should review the literature when working on a significant research project like a thesis or dissertation. In the first part of the video, I'll talk about the components of a good literature review and how these components work together to make a review more than just a summary of sources. At the end of this section, you'll be able to skip ahead to your specific discipline to get some tips from librarians on what sources are best for literature reviews in that area. Click on the bookmark icon in the upper right corner of your screen to view and select your discipline's chapter. Whether you study the arts, sciences, technology, or humanities, we've got you covered. The first thing to understand is what is meant by the literature. This is not just books on a shelf. The literature is a collection of all the pertinent scholarly writings on a topic, including scholarly articles, books, and other works. Often, there are major works that have been written on a topic, which are known as seminal or foundational texts, and then other, later pieces that build on them. These later works respond to or build on the seminal texts in some way. Basically, the literature is a continuously evolving body of scholarship that interacts with each other, forming a conversation. So why do scholars conduct literature reviews? There are many different reasons for reviewing the literature, depending on the scope of your project and the emphasis placed in different disciplines. People conduct literature reviews to distinguish what has been done from what needs to be done, discover important variables relevant to the topic, synthesize and gain new perspectives, identify relationships between ideas and practices, establish the context of the topic, explain the significance of the problem, become familiar with subject vocabulary and technical terms, understand the structure of the subject, relate ideas and theory to applications, identify main methodologies and research techniques that have been used, place research in a historical context to show familiarity with state-of-the-art development. As you do your own research, you will begin to understand the relationships between existing studies and works and how your own ideas fit into the conversation. Your literature review will show the different themes and methodologies covered throughout the conversation and how they can be applied. Ideally, you will create your own conceptual framework or outline of the literature on your topic. When you start writing your literature review, think about how all the works you are using fit together. A literature review is not a summary of sources or annotated bibliography, a literary criticism or grouping of broad, unrelated sources. It should have a well-defined scope and focus that addresses the themes in your thesis. In your literature review, you should provide an overview of the subject and establish its importance. Your source material should include both works that align with your position and any competing theories or alternative arguments. For example, let's say you find three major concepts or themes that are important in the literature and relevant to your research. You should identify how the content from the individual articles or books you found ties into each concept. Some articles may be relevant to several themes, others may apply to only one. You can discuss the distinctiveness of each source, the similarities between sources, and if you see any gaps in the literature. Gaps occur when something hasn't been tried or addressed before. Your aim when doing research is to fill these gaps. By creating your own organization for the literature, you will be showing the significance of your own research within the context of the scholarly conversation. This helps you defend your project as original scholarship. When you write your literature review, you will end up with a document that is organized by the themes and relationships you found and developed based on your reading and thinking. Your review will not only include the background on your topic, but also your own arguments. Many students ask us, how do I know when I have enough sources or when to stop researching my topic? A literature review is not a compilation of everything that has been written on a particular topic, and you won't find it all anyway. A good rule of thumb is to stop when you start seeing the same citations over and over. This is a sign that you've conducted a thorough review because authors are citing the same seminal works. You can also stop when you are merely collecting more items for areas that already have sufficient support in your paper. You don't need dozens of articles for each main point you are exploring. Your advisor or committee will also provide input for gaps in your literature review and provide feedback on areas for improvement. We've covered the basics of conducting a literature review, so now you can skip ahead to your specific discipline for tips on writing a review in your area. 
If you have any questions about resources mentioned here, contact UNO Libraries. In science, technology, engineering, and math disciplines, the timeliness of the literature review is important. Technology and scientific advancements develop very quickly, so there is a larger emphasis placed on the currency of the materials you use. You will conduct a comprehensive review of the literature to critically analyze existing scholarship while ensuring your scope includes the most recently published articles. This will help you position your topic within the academic conversation as something that builds on the most recent findings and has not been done before. You should not neglect the historical aspects of the research topic, but you will most likely place a greater emphasis on the current research compared to colleagues in humanities or social sciences. When conducting a literature review, you will most likely focus on how methodologies have been applied on different variables. The literature may tell you what populations, environments, or controls may have been used before, so you can seek out new ways of application. Finding the gaps in these applications may help you to decide how to apply a method in a new way, or try a standard protocol on a new population. In STEM research, objectivity is important for empirical studies and methodologies, especially those found in biology, chemistry, physics, and other physical sciences. Be sure to note if studies or research are sponsored by certain organizations or grant agencies, as this may lead to biases in the reported results. This is why STEM places such a high value on peer-reviewed journal articles. We want to make sure that the methodology is replicable and the results reported are sound. STEM research focuses on a short list of sources and peer-reviewed journal articles are generally the primary source of information as they are held to a high standard of objectivity through the peer review process. You might also use conference proceedings and books by scholarly publishers. STEM research also includes using outside data sets to run tests or try out new software. Dissertations and theses are occasionally used when there is not a lot of published research to be found because the research area is still developing or new. Generally, STEM researchers do not include historical documents or primary resources, newspapers, magazines, trade publications, or websites. While valuable for some projects, they may not be timely and or scholarly in nature. UNO Chris Library has excellent online databases for accessing cutting-edge STEM scholarship. The best place to start are these top five databases. ProQuest SciTech, ScienceDirect, Web of Science, PubMed, and IEEE Explore. These databases focus specifically on STEM, but we have access to many more databases that are interdisciplinary as well. With millions of peer-reviewed articles and books, you're sure to find information that is timely, relevant, and scholarly for your project. Like researchers in other fields, social scientists want to know what others have discovered before they begin their own investigation. Research questions are often asked in response to previous research to further explore and understand social phenomena. Literature reviews in social sciences focus on the variations in how scholars have defined and measured key concepts of variables related to a particular topic. Interpretation of these differences is a key factor in evaluating multiple studies. Making these comparisons is critical to understanding the assumptions and limitations of previous research. As you start reading previous research on your topic, pay particular attention to what major questions are being posed. What are the methods of investigation? For example, is the study qualitative, quantitative, or mixed methods? In addition, what are the major variables being investigated and their conceptual and operational definition, as in how have the researchers defined and measured these variables? And finally, what are the implications of the findings of previous research that you, you have reviewed? This is your opportunity to critique the approaches, methods, and findings, what seems most reliable, valid, and appropriate, and why. Where are the gaps, and how does your perspective build upon previous research on the topic? There is a wide variety of sources available for topics in social sciences. The sources you will likely use will depend on the topic of your literature review. For a majority of research topics in social sciences, you will typically use 
peer-reviewed journal articles, scholarly books, data sets, conference proceedings, dissertations and theses, historical documents, newspapers, magazines, trade publications, and websites. For research on topics in social sciences, the best databases to use are ProQuest Social Science Premium Collection, Academic Search Complete, Taylor & Francis Online Journals, Wiley Online Library, PsycInfo, and ICPSR, Inner University Consortium for Political and Social Research. In the Humanities and Fine Arts, you'll do a thorough review of the literature in order to critically analyze existing scholarship and position yourself within the academic conversation around your topic. Often a thesis or dissertation in the humanities or fine arts investigates primary sources like texts, artwork, theater, or music. With a solid grounding in theory and discussions of existing scholarship on your topic, you'll offer a new interpretation of what you read, see, experience, or hear. The specific organization of literature reviews in the humanities and fine arts varies widely according to field, and likewise, the structure of the literature review itself can depend somewhat on the nature of your current study. You'll often find literature reviews organized chronologically, highlighting major scholars in the field and trends over time. Treatments like these can also be called historiographies. Other ways to organize a literature review could be thematically, around the methodological context of the work or topic, or theoretically, around movements or schools of thought. In the humanities and fine arts, often there is no literature review section as such, but rather the examination of the literature is woven throughout the entire argument. So depending on your field, you'll use an array of primary and secondary source material. Critical editions of texts and scores will be helpful, as will documentary histories and historical criticism or reviews. You'll round out your review with peer-reviewed articles from journals, books or ebooks, and unpublished gray literature or white papers like conference proceedings, along with dissertations and theses. The best databases to use will be specific to your field. JSTOR is extremely valuable for humanities and fine arts research. Other databases to search include MLA International Bibliography, Academic Search Complete, Project Muse, Art and Architecture Source, and Music Index.